Y'all, today we are spilling all of the law school tea. So sit down, buckle up, get yourself a little beverage. I'm having an iced latte and let's get into it. If you're wondering who I am, my name is Kate and I just finished up my second year of law school at the University of Kentucky Rosenberg College of Law and I vlog my life as a law student so I make law school vlogs but there's honestly something for everybody within my channel. I make travel vlogs, fashion videos, I'm gonna be doing some work week in my life vlogs as I start my summer law clerk position that I'm moving to Nebraska for. So lots of exciting things coming up. Make sure you subscribe to follow along my journey. I really try to show law school as realistically as possible and just bring good positive vibes to everybody that happens upon my channel. So just given the nature of my content, I get a lot of questions about law school and what you should do in undergrad to prepare if it's really competitive and what the culture is like just so many questions and a lot of them are kind of the same so i decided that it would be really helpful for you all that are maybe going into your senior year of college wondering if you should go to law school or if you are you know newly accepted to law school and this is the summer before your 1L year and you just want to know what it's going to be like because it's kind of secretive and everybody's like oh it's going to be the worst time of your life I'm here to tell you that it will not be and I just want to help out anybody who's looking for more information so we're going to chat like we're besties I'm going to be totally transparent and honest about my experience with that being said every law school is probably a little different and everybody has a little bit of a different experience with law school so this is just my experience and my opinions none of this is legal advice obviously so this is how it's going to go we're going to go from undergrad all the way to actually being in law school now I can't really speak to what it's like to be an attorney because I'm not one. I haven't even finished my third year of law school yet. That's going to be coming this fall. So stay tuned for all the 3L content. I'm so excited. But I can provide you guys with what I do know. And I've been through undergrad. I've been through the admissions process. I've worked as a law clerk. I've done my two years and so I've been around the block a few times so let's get into it so I kind of have all of this listed out on my phone also I'm going to do some timestamps down below that way if you're only interested in part of this conversation you can just skip ahead but I just wanted to make sure everybody knows that because this might be a little bit of a longer definitely more chatty video than my usual content. So one of my most frequently asked questions is how to prepare for law school in undergrad. And I think what people really wanna know is kind of what they should major in and where they should spend their time during undergrad. And we'll get into the admissions process a little bit later in this video. So as far as your major, it does not matter what you major in. You don't have to have a specific major to get into law school, you could do fashion merchandising, you could do engineering, whatever you want to do. I personally majored in health services administration. I started out as pre-med, hated that, decided that definitely was not for me. And then I switched to health services administration with a concentration in informatics. And my junior year of college, I believe I had a health law class and that's kind of what prompted me to be interested in law school as an option because I was doing research on kind of what I wanted to do post grad. And I was like, oh, I don't have to be a poli sci major or a history major to go to law school. This is an option for me. Now, when people ask me what they should major in, I always say major in something that you enjoy, that you can get a job with if you decide against law school or if you don't get into law school. This is because if you major in poli sci or government or history or English, it may be a little bit harder for you to find a job, just statistically speaking, with those majors. Now, if you have a job in mind that you could get with those majors, more power to you. But I think for most people, it's a safer option to 
kind of major in something that you can definitely get a job with and make a good earning with and then minor in poli-sci or history or something to do with the law. I wish I had done that. I didn't minor in anything. I just had the concentration, but something I noticed in law school, especially the first year, um, coming from somebody who had not had a history or civics class since probably high school, I guess. And I don't have any lawyers in the family, so this was just a whole new world to me. I noticed that the the people who had minored or majored in um, poli-sci or something to do with the law, they just kind of had a leg up on everybody because they were used to reading cases. They were used to the jargon kind of associated with the law. So that's my advice. Major in something that you enjoy, that you can get a job with if you don't go to law school. Minor in poli-sci or something to do with the law. That way you're you know informed and educated and you come into law school knowing things that other people don't with that being said obviously you want to get good grades in law school i'll talk about my stats in just a few minutes i would say try to stay above like a 3.3 as far as your gpa goes i think that the lsat is weighed a little more heavily than GPA, but it's still, you know, people are still looking at your grades and being like, okay, you know, what, what happened here? You know, this person really performed well in English, so that can speak to their potential success in law school. So just keep that in mind. I know a lot of people try to blow off certain classes. You're like, oh, this isn't going to matter, but it will matter and it affects your ability to get scholarships. So, Keep that in mind. As far as the LSAT, I have a video where I talk about the LSAT a lot. I was so privileged to take the LSAT during COVID because I got way more time to study because the world was shut down and I also was able to take it from home, which was really nice and I think helped me a lot. And people always ask how I studied. Now, I only took the LSAT one time. I knew I wasn't gonna take it again. I just didn't want to. I was like, this score is gonna have to get me into law school. If it doesn't, it wasn't meant to be. But I did study quite a lot. I think I marked off like three-ish months to study. And the most important thing is to figure out how you learn and just keep doing that. For me, it was practice tests. I think that's the best way to, to study for the LSAT. There's also a really good YouTube channel that um, I watched while I was studying. I'll link it down below. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but I'm sure that I can find it. I kind of feel like the best time to start studying for the LSAT is during your junior year at some point. That way you can take the LSAT, I guess the spring semester of your junior year of college or the summer before your senior year of college. I know some people are non-traditional students and you might not even be an undergrad so i guess that doesn't really apply to you but for me i was really glad to take it ahead of time because that meant that i could apply to schools early so my stats i think i had a like a 3.4 between a 3.4 and a 3.5 gpa i don't even remember my login information um for my like EKU stuff, which is where I went to undergrad, but I'm almost positive that's what it was. And then on the LSAT, like I said, I took it one time. I got a 155, which is I think pretty average, like lower average. So my stats were not exceptional by any means. I think what really helped me stand out was my personal statement. So my personal statement was pretty much about how I started off undergrad as pre-med and I just knew that it wasn't for me and I felt like I could help more people if I went into more, you know, the administrative side of health healthcare and that's where I found my passion for health law and that's kind of what drove me to um, get into law school. And I just kind of talked about the adversity associated with coming from a family who has no lawyer so i was kind of just doing this you know by myself so i think if you can write a really good personal statement and portray who you are as a person to the reader that way you're not just numbers on a page or statistics it really helps you to stand out and you want to really try to touch the person that's reading you want them to be like 
damn, this really seems like a cool person. Like we, we want them at our school. That's what you want them to think. And like I said, I started the application process early. So I did early application, I think to all of the schools that I applied to, but definitely UK. So I applied the fall semester of um, my senior year and then I got accepted like a month later, which was super early. Um, I think it's just better to like apply early so you know early. It sucks to wait to hear if you're accepted or not. So definitely keep that in mind as you're kind of planning out when you want to take the LSAT. I recommend just studying as much as you can and get it, get it over with. Start your applications as soon as they come out. That way, if you are, you know, average in terms of your stats, you have a little bit of a leg up over everybody else that's just gonna put off applying until like after Christmas. So I applied to UK, University of Tennessee, um, Texas A&M and Loyola Chicago. I'm trying to think, but I, I'm pretty sure those were the only ones. UK accepted me within like a month. Like I said, University of Tennessee waitlisted me. Texas A&M just completely said, no, you're not coming to our school, babe. And then Loyola also waitlisted me. But honestly, UK was pretty much my top choice. I wanted to stay in Kentucky. First of all, because tuition is way cheaper in state, which is something to consider. And I'll also talk about costs a little bit later. I know people want to know how much law school really costs and they don't freaking tell you how much it really costs. Trust me. So that's kind of my spiel about the admissions process and undergrad. I will say if you can work during undergrad, I kind of think that it's helpful and Obviously your grades and classes should always be your number one priority, but some of the connections and just the network that I built during undergrad, super helpful. I mean, if you can kind of buddy up with an attorney um, or even like a paralegal, and if you can work in a law firm, that's even better, but just try to build your network and you know, know people who know people that way on down the line when you're looking for a job during law school you can say mm, i remember bill he knows brad brad is an attorney maybe they need help at their law firm so also networking during undergrad very important another question i get a lot is how do you prepare the summer before law school now when i was a scared little rising 1l when i would ask people this they'd be like oh the next three years are going to be the hardest years of your life just, you know, don't do anything. Just enjoy your last little bit of freedom this summer before you start law school. I think that's terrible advice, y'all. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Now, obviously, yes, rest up, really enjoy your summer as you would anyway, even if you weren't going to law school. But also, I think getting into a good routine and kind of setting yourself up for success and actually trying to do something with yourself during the summer before you start is a good idea because once you start law school, it is hard to really focus on anything other than your classes and, you know, extracurriculars. So I think getting into a good healthy routine for yourself prior to law school starting is a good way to set yourself up for success because I think a lot of people start 1L and they stop taking care of themselves Mental health is obviously a huge part of this conversation. It's so easy to kind of feel secluded, I guess, during your, your first year. If you can set yourself up to take care of yourself and just have a support system, I think that's key. And also consume some law school content. There are so many awesome law school content creators. I think watching what they do, kind of seeing what it's like, you know, day to day, I think that's a great way to start and there are just so many options out there. Just go watch some of them and see what these people are doing to succeed. That way you're prepared when you, when you start law school. Now, before I talk about law school orientation and what that looked like for me at my school, I want to talk a little bit about cost. This is also something I get asked a lot. Face value, schools will tell you kind of how much law school is going to cost. But if you're like me, I had no idea how I was going to pay for it. I had no idea the cost that they don't really tell you, like 
suits or books, just things that you don't even really think about that are super expensive. So I have my school's cost of attendance pulled up here and tuition for an in-state resident is around $25,000, just over that actually. And then these other costs that they have on here, such as room and board, books and supplies, travel, personal, loan, origination, I don't even really know what that means. So the total cost of attendance they're saying is $51,000, almost $52,000 for in-state, and then non-residents total, including tuition and all of those other costs, is pushing $80,000. So if you multiply that by three years, y'all, it is expensive. It is so expensive to law school and it's why I almost didn't go to law school because it just made me sick thinking about being in debt that much. And I do have scholarships, so that helps a lot, but it's honestly peanuts compared to like the overall cost, you know, like I'm very thankful to have my scholarships and stuff, but honestly, it's still a lot of debt. So when you first start law school your first year, my school at least had us sign something saying that we would not work. So you're probably wondering, how are you supposed to live if you cannot work? Because if you're like me, I've worked since I was like 17, I think, 16 or 17. My, my first job was at Subway. And so I've just kind of always had a job. So the whole idea of not working was just foreign to me. So this is kind of how it works. The cost of attendance is going to be your loan amount, okay? If you decide to take out loans. If you can just pay for all this crap out of pocket, I, I am jealous of you. I really am. But most people just take out loans. And so... Basically what happens is you'll take the cost of attendance and you'll take out a loan that covers tuition and then your living expenses. So like enough to cover your rent, food, all of that. There's no, there's really no like stipends. I know if you have a really good scholarship, um, you, you do get like a living stipend and you're not in so much debt but pretty much it's all covered with loans because you cannot work that first year, which is really scary, but you know, the idea is that you'll graduate law school and you'll make that big law salary baby and you'll be able to pay off all of that debt. This is why it's so important to get a good GPA, get a really good LSAT score and just do your best because that is how they assign scholarships and how you get your law school paid for. I have a friend who she performed really well on the LSAT and has an amazing GPA from undergrad and I'm pretty sure her law school is pretty much like paid for, which is awesome. Now, those are just the costs that they kind of say online. I'm going to go a little bit deeper and let's talk about the cost of having a suit for interviews. Suits are expensive, like nice suits are expensive and fees for extracurriculars. Like for my journal that I'm on, I think I paid like $100. Student Bar Association was a little over $100 I think. You also kind of have to think about the cost of taking the bar, um, obviously I'm not there yet. That's going to come after I graduate law school. But most people don't work during that time. They just study for the bar exam. And so you're kind of without income during that little period as well. And taking the bar exam itself is expensive. Prep course can run from like one to $3,000. Taking the bar costs, I don't even know how much. I think it's like 400-ish dollars, maybe more than that. So this is all just stuff to consider. I mean, not trying to stress anybody out, but these are things that I kind of wish I would have known more about and I wish somebody would have sat me down and been like this is this is what you're going to have to pay. Books also expensive but that's included on cost of attendance but I kind of just wanted to go over that. I'm not like a financial advisor by any means but just check out your school's cost of attendance and talk to people that go to that school so you can kind of gauge like how much money it's really going to cost. Another question I get is what can I expect from law school orientation? Now at UK orientation lasted, I want to say like a couple days or a few days, something like that. And it was mandatory. Like you had to come and it lasted, it felt like it lasted all day and they do kind of scare you 
I'll be honest, like they do kind of scare you. I remember sitting there just being like, what have I gotten myself into? But I do think that it's a good time to meet your classmates because everybody is in the same boat. Everybody is scared to death. Nobody knows what to expect from law school. Um, and I just think it's a great way to just kind of go ahead and start making friends and kind of network and see, you know, what you can learn about everybody. At my law school orientation, they had some like two L's and three L's there. So they are a wealth of information. Like you can just ask them any question you have and I'm sure that most people are happy to answer it. So it's really school specific though. So I'm not entirely sure like what each school's orientation will look like. Also in terms of orientation, I would say dress like business casual, like cute casual, maybe like slacks and a cute button down. Um, also just try to dress comfy because it's long days if your school does a long orientation. And just try to learn as much as you can, meet as many people as you can, really take, advan take advantage of what they're offering because it really is to kind of let you like dip your toes in before classes actually start. So that's, that's all I have to say about orientation. Just try to make it fun, try to enjoy it. Another question that I've gotten is, what do you buy for law school? What do you bring to law school? And I guess this kind of plays into what I was talking about earlier with costs. I definitely recommend a reliable laptop. I love my MacBook Pro. It's great for school stuff. I play The Sims on it. I edit my YouTube videos on it. So if you kind of have a lot of things going on, I really like my MacBook Pro. Some people also have an iPad and they like that as opposed to like a laptop. I would definitely say get just a couple of notebooks. Some professors don't allow computers in the class. So just always have something to write on just in case. Obviously quality pens, pencils, and literally a freaking like value pack of highlighters. You will just always need one. Also um, get a planner, whether that's a digital planner or a paper planner, you're, you're just gonna need one just to keep up with all of your readings and everything. I love Microsoft To Do. That's kind of my digital planner. And then I also just have a paper planner from Target that I really like. Like I said earlier, invest in a good, suit in a neutral color like I don't know like black or navy blue honestly would probably work so just try to invest in that and then finally probably just a good backpack or like school bag or something that you can you know carry around that's not gonna hurt your back or anything my school has lockers um, thankfully so I don't really have to tote around all of my books but oh also speaking of books try to order them a little bit early because they're always back ordered and it sucks to not have your books on the first day of class. So get your books early. You'll know your classes because everybody is assigned classes your 1L year. You don't really get to choose. So yeah, that's all I have to say about things you need to buy or bring to law school. So now I kind of just want to do some general questions that I get about 1L year. I want to make like a full 1L survival guide closer to the start of the semester. So I'm just going to answer a few questions that I've gotten um, pretty frequently. So first, is law school competitive? Okay, yes, law school is very competitive. It's competitive to get in. And then once you actually get in law school, I definitely think that Anybody who is interested in law school is probably just naturally competitive, but I think that you shouldn't be catty. You shouldn't be rude. Don't withhold resources from people. If your friend needs help, help them. I think the reason for this kind of like toxic competitive nature is caused by the fact that law schools curve their grades and it's kind of like on a curve. So only so many people can get A's, only so many people can get B's, and then everybody else just gets a C, which is not what anybody wants. And people can be really nosy about grades. Like, I'm not going to say names or anything, but one of my friends knows of this girl in our class and she got a job over the summer, between, I think between um, 1L and 2L. And basically when you apply to jobs through your school, 
Typically it's through this system called Simplicity, or at least ours is, and you give like your grade sheet and all this stuff. And somehow through her law firm, she got access to all of that information and she looked at everybody's grades who applied to that law firm and then she was going around and like telling people about it which is like really strange but anyway like people really do stuff like that and I just think it's crazy like why are you so worried about everybody else but I think if you're careful about your community and who you're associating with in law school you can really have a good trustworthy group of friends I would say just watch how they treat other people. Watch how your classmates treat other people and that's kind of how you know if that's somebody that you want to associate with. Also just in terms of mental health and kind of building a support system for yourself during 1L, it's, it's very important because 1L can be so mentally taxing, it's totally new, a totally new workload for most people and you may not always have time you know for your friends with that being said try to just make sure that you're still keeping up your friendships and relationships outside of law school sometimes law school can kind of feel like a bubble because you see the same people every single day you have class every single day usually um, as a 1l so it can be kind of hard to keep your relationships that you had outside of law school but i think it's so important to ground yourself keep your core support system um, and just try to really prioritize meeting up with somebody or even having a phone call at least a couple times a week to kind of keep yourself like sane another just like little random question that i get sometimes is whether there's a dress code in law school at my school, no. Um, I've seen people just wear like sweatpants, have their hair in a bun on top of their head. Some people really dress up and like wear a button down. So I guess it really just depends on you. But I think that it's a good idea to dress however makes you feel best because you wanna feel confident and able to really speak your mind in class. So just keep that in mind, you know. If you look good, you feel good. If you feel good about yourself, you're gonna be able to be more confident in class and speak up when you get called on and yeah that's what I have to say about that. I will talk more about 1L and I'm going to do a whole 1L survival guide like I said but this video is getting so long so I'm going to call this quits. I hope that this was helpful. If you have any more questions that I didn't get to just drop them down below or you can DM me on Instagram. I'll put my Instagram handle up here somewhere but thank you so much for watching. I'm so glad you found my channel and I will see you guys in the next video. Love you. Bye.